Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Revelation. Keep in mind, I'm using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. All right, we're in chapter 21. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 22, the last book of the Bible. And um, verse 7 says, look, I am coming quickly. The one who keeps the prophetic words of this book is blessed. So God, again, we talked about the glorious hope that he's given us in the new age, the new Jerusalem. Uh, and now he's going to just kind of reemphasize the why he's writing this book, the testimony of this book. He gave prophetic testimony to this book. So he says, look, I'm coming quickly now. The word quickly, what does he mean by that? And um, we remember, we haven't dove into detail the various defense, I mean, arguments, okay? Of, for example, the premillennial, amillennial, pre triptors. We mentioned them, but we didn't get into um, a lot of detail on those. Perhaps we can do another study on that, dedicated for that. But when he says, look, I'm coming quickly, some people will try to argue that these things took place back in AD 70. Well, if that's true, then what the heck are we doing here? After all that we've read, right? So what the heck are we doing here? What are we waiting on? Now, again, another view is that the idea is that when the events start to happen, they, come, they happen quickly. But at this verse, he says, look, I am coming quickly. Again, I think it's from God's perspective. What does God mean in terms of perspective? When he says, I'm coming quickly, not from our perspective. So there's a scripture in uh, Second Peter. Uh, let me find it because I think it's probably good to understand this right now. In Second Peter chapter uh, 3. And... Um, he talks about those who scoff. Um, look at verse 8. He says, uh, Dear friends, do not let this one thing escape you. With the Lord, it's, it's, uh, with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. So that's the idea right here. So when, and he, he, Peter was making this in response to people saying, Well, where is the promise of his coming? From our perspective, it's been 2,000 years since these writings took place. Well, Peter says, hey, from God's perspective, a thousand years is like a day, and the day is like, is like a thousand years. Now, by the way, there are some people who try to make a prophetic timeline out of this statement. It's an erroneous because they try to say that a, since a day is like a thousand years, that 2,000 years is two, day, two days, we can pin down Jesus' coming. Well, also remember, the argument goes the other way. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So it goes both ways, okay? Which, by the way, all millennials would point out that same thing. But anyway, so when he says, look, I'm coming quickly, that's from God's perspective. He says, the one who keeps the prophetic words of this book is blessed. Here's the walk away from this. Regardless of how the timeline, which we don't have any control plays out, here's our part. Keeping the prophetic words of this book. That's the thing. Keeping the prophetic words of this book. Verse 8. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I fell down and worshipped at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But he said to me, don't do that. I'm your fellow slave with you, your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book worship God. I didn't, the last time John had did this, when he fell down before the angel to worship, the angel said again to him, don't do it. And again, he's saying it here. But one, John is overwhelmed. He's in the spirit. One, his sinful nature causes him to cringe in the presence of the holy God. But then secondly, um, you know, again, he's just overwhelmed. But nevertheless, he kind of lose sight for something. This is very interesting because notice the angel says, worship God. When he falls down, 
to worship this angel, uh, which is kind of probably an instinctive thing to do. The angel says, worship God. And I think every true servant of God, every true and genuine representative of God will always say that. They will never, ever draw attention to themselves, take glory for themselves. Worship God. Okay? Verse 10. He also said to me, don't seal up the prophetic words of this book because the time is near. Let the unrighteous go into unrighteousness. Let the filthy go on being filthy. Let the righteous go on being righteous. And let the holy go on being made holy. So, um, the book of Daniel was Daniel was told to seal up his prophecy until the time of the end. And now it's interesting, at the time of the end, and by the way, the time of the end was marked by Jesus coming to the earth, appearing on the earth the first time. But notice he says, now, unlock. The point is, God wants us to understand that these things are not written in such a hard way, a complicated way. Man is the one who complicates. Remember when we said even with the beginning of the book of Revelation here, how people are afraid of this book. Oh, we can't understand this book. Yes, you can understand it perfectly. Just don't complicate it with your interpretation or what you're trying to add and adjust, uh, 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 project onto it. So he says, um, unseal the prophecy. Verse 12, look. I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me to repay each person according to what he's done. So again, these truths, the hard truth that he's re-emphasizing here, right? He's coming and his reward is with him. So he's going to reward every person to what he's done. Verse 13, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who watch the robes so that they may have a right to, to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gate. Now, when we see a statement like this, what does he mean by this? So does he mean salvation by works? And then, of course, if he means salvation by works, what are the works he's referring to? Again, so again, we, uh, you always take these scriptures in light of what the Bible has already taught us. Washing our robes, meaning our faith in Jesus Christ, our faith in the work on the cross, our faith in his propitiatory work, that's what washes our robe. Your good works cannot wash your robes, okay? And enough to make them clean, enough for you to get into heaven. Verse 15, outside of dogs, sorcerers, sexual immorality, murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves and practice lying. So again, the sinful nature, those who are outside. By the way, those who are outside are those who had refused to obey the gospel. And that's the difference here. Verse 16. Now Jesus has sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So again, um, again, by saying this, this is the prophetic. In other words, God didn't just start this in his book. He had been saying these things from the Old Testament to the New. And of course, the fact that he said that he's signified by his angel signifies the seriousness and how the, the importance that God would attest with a prophetic and an angelic testimony. 17. Both the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Anyone who hears should say, Come. And anyone who is thirsty should come. Notice that. This last thing. If you're thirsty, come. Nobody, God is, God is not stopping you. What's stopping you? That sinful nature. Whoever desires should take of the living water as a gift. Whoever desires. I testify to everyone who hears the prophecy, I mean the prophetic words of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to, to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this prophetic book, God will take away his share in the tree of life in the holy city written in this book. Now, I don't know the extent of what this means here. I mean the severity. It's I take it right here for what it says. I'm not going to even try to explain. We are told throughout Scripture not to add or take away from God's Word, from God's message. Now, there are people who are doing that now. We, we, we have churches and leaders who are trying, for example, they're trying to uh, take away the gender neutral, things like that. But the very essence, there are, people, there are people who are saying that there's no hell. 
See, that's taken away from the essential message of the gospel. So he says there's a stiff punishment for that. Verse 22, he testified about these things, says, yes, I'm coming quickly. So the spirit of prophecy, by the way, everyone says, come, Jesus. Not, oh, Jesus, hold off for a minute. I want to get my vacation in, right? So uh, he says, amen, come, Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints, amen. Last statement, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. What a wonderful way to end the book. The word saints means those who are sanctified, okay? The word saint doesn't mean a special person, a super duper extra good person. A saint is one who God has separated by Jesus' sacrifice. So everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is a saint. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all saints. All right, that closes off this book. Also closes off the letters of John that we've just finished studying. On to the next study in the next book. I'll see you then. Amen.